All right, big thanks to our friends at Delta. We're gonna keep things rocky and rolling here. Day three, Miami NFT week. You guys excited? You should be, that's why you're here. Our next panel is the intersection of art, technology, and blockchain, a new era for creativity. Friends, please welcome, welcome to the stage of moderator and introduce our panel, Raxi. This is when we clap and cheer. Sustainable Development Goals. 
So being able to bridge my social activism, I'm, a, I'm an ambassador for Web3 Equity. So gender equity in tech is a, a huge passion for me. So, and education as well. So being able to bridge those two passions um, and transcend the atmosphere literally, <laughs> I would say it's a, it's a pretty significant opportunity. But yeah, as Sophia was saying, um, this idea of connectivity, of global connectivity that, that, that allows us to not only use platforms like social media, but also to monetize that use. Yeah, no, that's interesting. That is so cool. And uh, wow, your NFTs are actually going to the moon. That's amazing. And uh, Marlon, what about you? Have you found like new opportunities in Web3? Or how has it treated you as an artist so far? Like what new opportunities have you have you found that you didn't find in the past? Well, yes, uh, I think here we can find opportunity for everyone. Actually, I came from Cuba. I, I have been living here for the last three years. Um, for the Cuban art community and for the Latin American art community, the NFT space has been uh, a space of freedom, uh, an amazing space where we create a community from people around the world, and we, in some point, where the our artists were getting uh, without voice, without representation in countries like we, like we have, they find the space to commercialize the world, to represent our traditions, to represent our culture. At, but not only in Cuba, also around all the, the places in Latin America, in Asia, in Europe, and here in the United States. And that created a huge uh, thing in our, in our country. And today we have been capable to, to create a lot of events inside Cuba, outside Cuba, and all, uh, around the world. And I think that is one of the, the best aspects that the NFT space has given to us. The freedom to do whatever we want to do and say it because of the control that the government imposes in, in our people. Yeah, that was a great answer. I loved hearing from these. And for me personally, um, I love this idea of community um, that they were talking about. And I think like that is the key of you know the intersection between art and tech and Web3 is as an artist, and I'm sure these artists have experienced it themselves and yourself as a curator, I might sell one of my art pieces in a gallery and have no idea who bought it. I will never meet that person. I don't have a relationship with that person. But NFTs is so about community and you can really create a community around your art. But I also love being able to have this relationship with them, whether it's digital um, or sometimes in real life, right? At these events, you get to meet collectors. I find that person like so special because in real life, I've sold so many pieces to people I'll never know who they are and usually with traditional art you know you're hanging in your house or something you're not always putting those things on social media whereas with NFTs our art is kind of being showed off like a trophy right as a PFP or or a tweet and people are actually showing it off so I personally just love this idea of uh, community and kind of having that newfound relationship with collectors who want to collect my work um, well, did you have something that no no, no I, I absolutely love this idea of community that, that is allowed by the NFT space. Um, however, I think for the, as, as we're beginning to build a more significant contemporary art presence within the Web3 space, uh, we need to have institutions and galleries and curators as well as artists and collectors to really make that a sustainable ecosystem, right? Uh, so I think, and all that, all that starts with education. I think education in this space is the, of the pro most primary importance because it's often overlooked. We are only talking to each other so far. It's only us in these events. Uh, it's generally the same people that are within the community that we see and we really need to reach out to broader audiences and educate as much as possible to have this, this movement really take off. Excellent, yeah, and for this is for anybody who wants to answer first. What is the biggest challenge you see? You kind of touched on one of the challenges I see a little bit. What is the biggest challenge you see facing artists in Web3 on getting their artwork out there? Well, I, I think not only for artists. Uh, all the space needs uh, a lot of education in many ways. Uh, in moral ways, in practice, and we need to educate people to understand how their world works. 
uh, from the traditional standpoint and the, the digital point of view and also understand how really the technology is working for some communities, for example, for artists that live in countries that have been blocked uh, in the blockchain, for companies uh, like OpenSea, Nori, for example, Cuban artists, Iranian artists, uh, it's a very hard process after one year or two years creating a career in the digital art space, losing all the work, and they now need to start again. So we need to communicate better. We need to understand that the Web3 and decentralization is not real yet. We are so far to, to be in the safe place for everyone. And that is one of my main uh, preoccupations. My community also is a lot of worry about that. What about you, Sophia? Yeah, I mean, I think that one of the biggest challenges is also with what, one of the pros, which is how flexible, how open everything is, the fact that I can reach out to an artist and talk to them. Um, but it's also a huge challenge for a lot of the artists to keep up with all the admin work that comes into managing your own career. And so um, I'm hoping to see more curators, dealers, um, agents come out and really come in to support the artists and be able to guide them because there's so many opportunities coming uh, our way and so many people want to engage in the space but um, really being able to decipher what are the good opportunities out there what's actually going to help this artist long term it's really important to have that support and so um, yeah I think that's it's this like again like the pro that we're all like we don't need the traditional structures of uh, the, the contemporary art market but then yeah, we start there's to a lot to be set for gatekeepers yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah exactly and so uh, you know now it's kind of like okay well now we see that there is a need for that you know, the artists that I work with, I know that they're really grateful for the fact that they have someone that they can lean on to even like go through their emails and say like, no, no, no don't answer that, it's fine, we'll, we'll let them know that you're not interested. Um, it's, there's a lot of weight that's being held on uh, the shoulders of artists. So. Especially for, for collectors, yeah. you know, yeah. of collectors of, of contemporary art and it's digital. Yeah. They, they need the role of curators and galleries who are guiding them with the building of their collections. Yeah. If they're building serious collections. Because I think when you first start selling your artwork, there's you know there's something really charming about being able to have that conversation over DM and negotiate price points. But there comes a point in your career where you might need another person to come in and you know remove the artist from the conversation. Like let's have this conversation. This is how much this art is worth, and you know the people have been really offensive to the artists that I've worked with and said things uh, trying to get a lower price or something like that. And um, I can have that debate with them, and there's no personal. Uh, you know, emotions involved because I'm just looking out for the best for the artist and if you're not going to pay uh, what I think is, you know, what we agree that this art is worth, then, you know, move along, we'll find another collector. Yeah, I agree. Curators are so important. And um, I really want to fit this one in because this is a hot topic. I want to talk about this idea of utility, which I also think is so important between art and tech that almost didn't exist before in real life. Maybe, I don't know, they have collectors party for artists. And it took me, I'd say, as an artist, for me personally, it took me a while to get used to this utility thing, because I think artists are like, well, my art's, you know, good enough. It doesn't need utility. But I have come around, and I've, I've really kind of explored this idea, so I'd definitely like to hear from the panelists, like, what they think about this awesome idea of adding utility to the artwork. Oh, that's my pet peeve. <laughs> it is? Yeah, originally no, it was I, mine, too. Yeah. You, no, I, I think there's a big confusion between uh, graphic design and contemporary art, right? And a lot of what we've seen so far in the Web3 world has been graphic design used to access a community, you know, which is fantastic utility. But that's not necessarily the role of art, you know? So if we want to, uh, you know, Web3 NFTs are a great way to commercialize uh, installation work that is temporal or video art that's how you sell it in a DVD that's outdated or in a, in a thumb drive, you know, it's a great tool for commercialization of these these branches of the traditional art world that were difficult to, to deal with. I think the utility of art is the art itself and we have to, artists have to defend that. Yeah, I felt the same way at first, but I have come around a little bit. So, okay. Sophia, what about you? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a nuanced thing. And I think, um, you know, everything that's being created is not uh, being created with the same context in mind. And so um, I, I do work, I feel like, in the contemporary generative art uh, space. So I am working with artists who are making work just to make their work. And um, 
I think that there is use case for utility, of course, but um, the argument that all work has to have a utility or something like that, I, I, I don't um, I don't subscribe to that narrative. Uh, you know, I, I, I find myself having debates with the different collectors at times where they want to see something else coming from the artist, but if you're buying artwork, buy artwork that you love and there should be nothing, there, there's no problem with it. You know, there's, um, I think in 2021, we saw a lot of that um, speculative conversation where someone was buying something they expected to get a return really, really quickly. Um, but just buy art that you like and that you can afford. And, and Marlon, we're almost out of time. What about you? You want to squeeze yeah, something in? Yeah, I think it all depends on what kind of artist you are, uh, what kind of practice you do, uh, what you want to get from the audience. Uh, you know, that is the, the most important thing. Everyone needs to be sure about that, but I think an artist don't need to be worried about the utility that the work has. The utility of the work is keep creating, keep developing your vision, your practice, and connecting with the work. Get your your speech out there. No, and also I think the utility comes in with the galleries and the institutions. So a digital institution can offer the utility of providing artist talks or experiences. Putting that pressure on the artists themselves is a lot. Yeah, definitely. Well, I'd love to continue this conversation maybe on Twitter Spaces. This just got very hot, but I personally would love a free t-shirt with like an Andy Warhol painting if I buy it, personally. Uh, but guys, thank you so much. We're, we're out of time, but thank you so, so much for joining us here today. Does anybody have some uh, their last final words for the oh, Thank you for so much for joining us. It was a pleasure. Thank, thank you, you thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, everybody. And uh, we'll be around, so I'll peace.